Welcome back to State of Decay 2 and the Lion's Share. Uh, we've just defeated our last plague heart in Drucker County, and now it is time to pursue our Warlord missions. Now, the first qualification for pursuing a legacy for the Warlord or for anybody is to build the special facility that uh, th that particular leader likes. And so we've got a Warlord, that means they want an armory. Um, and so we could build an armory, but something I noticed is that we've got this mission to build an armory. And specifically it says, as one of the one of the objectives, choose a new base capable of supporting an armory. So that mission was designed for players who stay in the starter base, because the starter base does not have a... Oh, Freak Spotted. Anything about to attack me? Nope. Okay, great. Um, that base you know, does not have a, a large slot, which means you can't build any of the leader buildings, which means you can't complete any legacies from that base. You have to be in a bigger base. And mostly we did that to, to, to get players to, to move on, to basically say, you know, we, we want you to not just blow through the missions and then not see the game. We want you to have to actually go out, claim a, new, a larger base, enjoy the experience of building a new base um, and, and have the full experience before you move on. And so we made um, these you know, leader facilities you needed to build that required a larger base to kind of push players you know, through the progression and help them sort of see the broader perspective of, of, like, you know, like, of, of what, what this game can be. Hoping that, you know, sure, they'll complete the legacy, but they'll want to stick around in the game because there's so much systemic stuff for them to get involved in. Um, but this mission, what it's doing is it's making some kind of check to see, am I in a base that where I can build an armory? Um, and I guess at whatever conditions we set up, somehow this mission is convinced that I'm in the wrong base and that what I need to do is move bases. It thinks, uh, it, you know, whatever, uh, we set up a set of conditions to try to detect if the player is in the starter base. And I think that we've, we've triggered that set of conditions, which means it's acting like I need to move. And this is a problem because a lot like a brand new player might think that they need to move now when actually I'm in like the biggest base on this map. I don't need to move. Um, all I need to do really is rip up my staging area and build an armory in this slot. So we're going to do that. And so now my que question is, where are the, where's the armory? It's down here. So now my question is, and actually since we've got an armory... Okay, good. Yeah, we don't even have a... I was about to say, we don't need to have a uh, an ammo press here, but we don't have an ammo press here. And I should do that. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So the question is now, now that the mission has convinced itself that, that the problem is that I need to claim a new base, is that mission just watching for me to claim a new base? Oh, no, it's six at night. That means it's going to start getting dark. Is it going to wait for me to claim the new base and, like, not want to go away until I've claimed a new base? Or have we set it up so that there's an invisible objective that if the player builds an armory, the mission realizes, oh, they've done what they needed to do. Fine, I'll go away. Um, I'm genuinely not sure. It's been a long time since I've looked at this mission. I'm genuinely not sure how it's set up. So in about 31 minutes, we will find out if that satisfies that mission. In the meantime, though, we've got some other stuff that we can do. We can, for instance, clear out that infestation. So, let's do that. And then we, can, we we've got this completed bounty that we need to uh, satisfy too. So, we'll head down this way. Oh wait, before we do, I just realized I think I've got too much of one of these resources. Meds. Oh, meds and food. Okay, feral. Just a second. I've got too much meds and too much food. I need to spend that stuff before we waste it. So I'll do that in just a bit, but let's put some distance between me and that feral and me and every other dumb zombie. Definitely me and that bloater. Okay, am I gonna get somewhere where I feel safe or... Nope, here was a <laughs> screamer. Could have gotten a lot worse. Yeah, okay, I think what we're gonna do is maybe not try to open up our base UI for a bit. Ooh, is this a gas a source of fuel that I haven't scoured yet? Because if it is, I should scour it. Oh, crap. I got too close. The screamer knows I'm here. He's gonna start screaming and attracting bloaters and that's gonna be garbage. Oh, here they are. Here they are. Here they are. Okay, they heard me, but they didn't see me. Unfortunately, I don't have a good long-range gun, do I? 
Look what I do! Oh crap! He ducked down! Love that cold turkey. There we go. Okay, so actually using a really loud gun like this is a bad move. Because all it's going to do is pull more zombies into the infestation. So let's switch back to our suppressed gun if we need it. But what I'd love to do is just gather these zombies into a nice pile and set them on fire. I wonder what the best way to do that is. Okay, run it on empty. I know. Maybe I'll climb up here. Hey, everybody. Oh, I'm just a little too high, huh? Just a little bit too high. Is it just the two of you? You got some friends. Okay, there's somebody else over there. Now, I'm not sure under what conditions a zombie will just give up and decide not to chase me. So I want them all to come all the way over here and get into a nice pile for me. Okay, they're all making noise and attracting each other. That's probably helping. All right, let's go. Hey, everybody. See ya. Ha-ha! <laughs> oh, this character's got assault. Which means that he's got the most useless ability in the game. I seriously think people only use the assault kick by accident because they think the character has gunslinging. Okay, we killed all these nearby zombies. Let's close ourselves in here. I guess we could have gone to the roof too. That would have actually been even better. But we'll come in here and then, yeah, we should, once I'm done searching this, which I'm searching for no reason. Ah, materials. We should look up here and try to spend some of this food and meds. So the meds, let's make this. Let's make some cure. Actually, we've got enough meds. We can make some bulk cure. For the next time I need influence. And then food, it looks like I already lost some food. Okay, so we are, now that I've gotten rid of the staging area, we're losing materials each day. So I'm going to hold on to my materials now. Um, fuel, we got minus one a day. So as my influence goes up, I'm definitely going to want to level up my, my gas outpost. In the meantime, I'm assuming there's going to be a fuel rucksack in here somewhere that I can grab. La Coalition is suggesting um, a way for me to totally piss off the entire community, which would be to nerf Red Talon by taking away their gunslinging ability, their their snap, their aim snap, and giving them the assault kick instead. Because I mean, we don't we don't let them have aim snap in Daybreak just because it would be a win button for Daybreak. Like why, you know? Why would you want to play something like that? Oh, whoops! Of course, I can only carry one rucksack at a time. Um, so yeah, so so we don't let them do aim snap in daybreak. But once you get them out of daybreak, they're perfectly capable of aim snapping all day. Uh, sure. Just drop off random crap we don't need. Whatever. Ooh. Some electronics, maybe? Nope. Let's go grab us that rucksack. There we go. Is that everything? No. Oh, no. We got some containers out here, too. <gasps> you didn't see this, but Steph has recovered from missing chunk of flesh. I'm always amazed when people are able to recover from missing chunk of flesh. All right. I heard a feral. I don't see a feral, but I heard a feral. Actually, I should probably refuel. Huh, Squatting Dog says, off topic, but I just recently lost a Blood Plague survivor that finished a legacy, went into a new game, then transferred some gear, then didn't end up back 
in the legacy pool. So, so what did you do after you transferred the gear? Like, did you, did you legacy again with the community you sent them to? Are you playing in the PTR or are you playing in the live game? Squatting dog. I think, I think I might need more information to understand what's, what's going on. Let me... Oh, hey, another infestation. Cool, right where I need to be. Uh, so Tendalense is reminding me that right before I started this stream, there was a question. I think, was it from you, Tendalense? Um, there's a question about whether or not this game was developed primarily for controller or for mouse and keyboard. Um, so the, qu the answer to that is complicated. Uh, I really hope they didn't summon a bloater up this road. Um... It's complicated. So, di different part. This is actually a problem we had to contend with. You know, a game is made by a lot of different people simultaneously, and um, different people have different sort of habits and presets and assumptions. Um, and if you're not like, you know, if you don't want to be like super top-down controlling about things, which you know, generally I don't, um, and I don't like you know being on a team that's super top-down and controlling. Um, you, you end up with a lot of people sort of making a lot of independent decisions. And so what you ended up with, like on State of Decay 2, um, our design director, you know, he he had, he, he, a lot of his experience was designing combat systems for consoles. Um, you know, he, he was um, largely responsible for the combat in God of War, for instance, the original, um, and stuff like that. So that was his habit. That was where, where his experience was. So a lot of his, the way that he thought about designing our combat system was very controller-centric. Oh, crap. Feral? Really? Stop it. Okay, this drives me crazy. Ah! There we go. Got it. Alright. Anyway. Yeah, so this combat system... The one for State of Decay 1 that this is originally based on, and also this one, we're, we're heavily based on you know, what you can do with the controller. The idea that like a lot of your moves involve holding down a bumper, especially actually earlier on. Oh gosh, okay, fine. You know, before we made some adjustments to the control scheme, there was even more like button cording. Like the fact that you had to, uh, in order to, um... oh gosh, got a screamer around here? Where? Oh, why is this a disaster? Sorry, I'm having trouble answering your question because I'm distracted. All right, hold on. Nope. There you go. Another one? No one needs that crap. Okay, a bunch of them got taken out by that. Oh, I heard that coming. Yeah, so a lot a lot of our combat system, dang it, go away. A lot of our combat system was based on you know, the, the assumption that like by default you were playing with a controller. And you know, the original State of Decay 1, we're just never running out of these freaking zombies. Um, the original, you know, State of Decay 1, was explicitly an Xbox game. We actually, you know, we did a, P it was not natively on PC. We, 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 we did a port, like, the first assignment I had, actually, when I joined the team, was to design the PC port. Um, you know, the changes to the control scheme we needed to do. For instance, in State of Decay 1, the original, okay, you know what? I don't think I can stay around here. I think that these zombies are just gonna keep coming literally forever. And I'm never gonna get to talk to Cash. I think maybe, maybe if I had, the thing is, oh, I can't even get in my car. If I had like, aim snap, maybe I could take him out fast enough, but I don't. So I'm just gonna run. We'll come back later. Let's run to somewhere we can finish this conversation. Um, 
Can I put as many walls between me and the zombies as I can? I know there's a some kind of fancy thing up on this rooftop. Let's just come up to this rooftop. We'll lose the zombies. Was there roof access? I th oh, there it is. I just walked right by it. We'll let the zombies do their own thing and uh, forget that I'm there and we'll go back. Anyway, so yeah, you can tell that our, our, our like combat system is very heavily built around the controller. Um, but there's other parts of the game that were, uh, you know, implemented, for instance, by a programmer who mostly plays PC games. And so you'll see parts of our interface make the assumption that actually the, the, the sort of the native control scheme of the game is a mouse and keyboard and the controller is more difficult to use. Um, in State of Decay 1, like I was saying earlier, the, the facility system was really, really heavily based on the idea that you were using a controller and navigating from block to block, you know, from facility to facility around the, the blueprint of the of the base. Um, and then when we tried to implement a mouse and keyboard on top of that, it was really tough because there was all of this, like, massive changes to the interface would happen every time you switched from one facility to another, um, which feels good when you're doing these very deliberate moves with a controller. But if you're sweeping a mouse cursor across them, then it changes so rapidly that it's obnoxious. And so we had to come up with a completely different way to handle the facility screen in State of Decay 1 with mouse and keyboard versus with uh, controllers. And so anyway, so, so some of the parts of our interface feel like they were made for a mouse and keyboard. Some of them are made to feel like a controller. And actually, there's some places where you can look. If you go to any menu, um, and when you first open it, see if there is a visible cursor. If there's a visible cursor, that means that whoever made that menu was thinking controllers first, because controllers always need to have a visible cursor on screen when a menu opens. But if you open the menu and there is no visible cursor until you start moving the cursor, that's a menu that was implemented by someone who is thinking like mouse and keyboard, where when you first open a menu, there's no visible cursor because your mouse determines where the cursor goes. Um, and so you can see that across our game, like I've actually, somewhere we've got a document where I've like meticulously listed all of the menus that work one way and all the menus that work another way. It said, we should fix this and harmonize it so that it actually does what it should do based on which control system you're using, based on which input system you're using. Um, and that's still a bug sitting there. No one's done it because uh, it's really boring, obnoxious work. And ultimately, it doesn't make that big of a difference to your experience. And so we always prioritize other stuff over it. Um, but yeah, so so it's so it's a complicated. The, the reason I delayed answering the question until we were on the air was because it's a complicated question, you know, with a lot of our menus being thought of primarily as as mouse and keyboard menus, but our action being primarily, you know, uh, controller, and there being a lot of sort of messiness in between. You know, it, it means that it's just it's a little bit. It, it's part of what contributes subtly to that feeling of jankiness. That the game can have, you know, we're just, just little things don't feel quite right in a very subtle way that's even hard to, to put your finger on exactly. Um, and so, one thing that, that you know, uh, the next time I'm working on a game that's supposed to come out on both console and PC equally, one thing that I would really love to do is just make sure that you know we've got processes in place. Another freaking feral, really? Okay, everybody's coming back. Okay, this is no better than last time. But this time they're on this side of the wall. So you know what? I'm going to run over here. I'm going to talk to Cash while they're still charging at me. I'm just going to claim my bounty like that. Get in the car. I don't even care how many of them get on the car. Don't even care. Oh, all of them? No, okay, just two of them. Just two of them. Good. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, so, but now we've got this thing. Anyway, so yeah, so that can contribute to the general feeling of jank. You know, and so it's important, I think, like, you know, working on other games to learn from that and basically say, you know, the first question, you know, when we're working on the UX of another game, the first question should always be, okay, I'm seeing this being demoed and tested uh, with a controller. How does it work with mouse and keyboard? Or I'm seeing this, you're know, being tested with mouse and keyboard. How does it work with a controller? And that's actually not that hard to do. The problem is that it takes time. And actually, I believe, if I remember right, and I, and I could be remembering wrong, I think there actually was a conscious decision made during the development of State of Decay 2 to deprioritize the expensive and difficult process of making sure that every single part of the game worked equally well uh, with mouse and keyboard and with controller. Um, 
because... Oh, gosh. I don't have any fire left. Hold on. Do I have a... I don't have any fire. Um... Because we just didn't have a lot of time. This was like, you know, we've talked a lot about how we had very little time and resources because we didn't... Oh, what the? Three of them? Really? Because we had a lot of, um... No. Oh, you stop that. No, I don't have any... Get off! No! 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 So anyway, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes if you get into, like, you know, dire straits, not having a lot of time, not having a lot of resources, uh, sometimes you end up needing to sort of, you know, cut some of the thoroughness from the process. And so, I mean, uh, I think it's, you know, it's it's no secret that we we felt like we didn't have a ton of time when we were working on, on State of Decay 2. Um, and, uh, you know, we kind of had to cut corners to try to just make the game work to make it come out uh you know at any kind of reasonable time uh we were working with you know very little and uh and we did our best you know but that was you know it's really it, it's sometimes hard to pin, put your finger on something like an actual specific choice that you made that led to a game feeling a little bit janky i think that's actually one choice we can't actually point to where it's like we decided not to put the extra time into making sure up front that every single thing was fully uh, vetted for, um, you know, for both mouse and keyboard and controller because that would make everything happen a month later <laughs> or whatever on the schedule, something like that, than it would normally happen. And we needed to, you know, not just to get the game out on time, but we also needed to get the game working faster. And actually, that's what that decision was about. It wasn't really, I mean, most of, you know, the big, the big problems with the mouse and keyboard or the controller not working, we fixed all of those before release. It's like little subtle things that we didn't get to. And if we had spent the time to make sure that everything was well planned out for both controller and mouse and keyboard from the outset, we could have skipped a lot of those little tiny janky little pieces of nonsense that creep in that don't hinder the game in major ways, but that just cause little minor little minor problems in your, it's like, this feels a little off and you're not sure why. We could have corrected some of that. The problem was that would have delayed the beginning of getting features working. And, and the biggest problem we had during development was needing to see a, a, a feature working. And if we were going to spend an extra two weeks or an extra month or something like that, vetting the heck out of the UX to make sure that it worked, you know, uh, really, really well and felt natural with both mouse and keyboard and controller and solved every single problem in advance, it takes us longer to get to the point where the feature is testable um, and, and playable. And so we basically cut that phase out. We're like, okay, let's just whatever feels best to whoever's implementing it let's just get it working as quick as we can and we'll save that sort of harmonization of the control schemes for later on down the line but we need to see the game working so we can find out if it's good and if there's big problems we need to find them early and, and fix them so it was the correct logistical decision at the time given the situation we were in with limited time and limited resources trying to make this huge elaborate game and needing to see it in action because we had delayed our production by restarting with a new engine. There's just a lot of weird stuff going on there. Um, so I think it was probably the right strategic call, but it has consequences. When you make a call like that, it's got trade-offs. And one of the trade-offs is the game just feels a little awkward on each control scheme in different contexts. Um, and so, yeah, so we could put, you know, the time into solving a lot of those little small problems. And I hope that at some point we do. But, you know, we're still solving big stuff. So we're still like, you know... Uh, adding, you know, major revisions to, to huge systems in the game in order to uh, to make the whole thing feel better. So, anyway, um, 
I think that's the end of this episode. <laughs> I think this episode is ending as a tragedy. Um, and it's time for me to go. So, uh, if you're watching this on Twitch live, obviously, uh, I am going to shoot another episode. I usually try to do three a week, three or four a week. So, um, I'm going to do another one. We're going to go out and we're going to try to, uh, get that dead body back, get that Vandito back. Um, but for right now, uh, especially for those of you watching on YouTube later on, uh, this episode is over. So... There's a subscribe button. There's a link to the next episode. And uh, we're going to go out and see if we can save Liam's dead corpse.